Hi everyone, I'm Anmul and I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. And today's topic of discussion would be automation of cloud robots serverless. Now, what do we mean by robots which are serverless? So it simply means that now UiPath offers you a capability that you can run background automation without worrying about the necessary infrastructure, which means if there is certain process that you want to run, then you need not to worry about the underlying infrastructure or on the machine that it's going to run, which in my personal opinion, I think is a great capability to offer. So now we do have the freedom of provisioning, managing, maintaining, and running the processes without worrying behind the scenes about the virtual machines or the physical servers. Now for you to access all these capabilities, there is certain prerequisite that you must abide by so that you can utilize this feature. Now we're gonna see what are the prerequisites and what are the settings that we should be following up so that we can actually utilize the serverless robot. Now, first and foremost, it says that you need to have a background cross-platform automation project. Background automation, we already know that in which a lot of UI interaction is not involved. So we need to make sure that it's a background automation. Now, second being, it should be a cross-platform automation project. Now, what do we mean by it should be a cross-platform automation project? So when you go to your UiPath Studio and simply create a process, say I create a process and I name it, say print the date. Okay. Now under compatibility, there are three options. One is Windows, the second is cross-platform and then Windows legacy. So we need to make sure that we are selecting cross-platform. So this is what we mean by that it should be a background and a cross-platform automation project. Okay. Now, once you've given a name to your process and you've selected compatibility as cross-platform, you can simply go and create the process. Okay. Now, there are certain orchestrator level settings also that you need to do. But before that, let's add a few logs here and publish this particular process. So we actually have a cross-platform and a background related automation process published on our orchestrator. And then we look towards the settings of the orchestrator. So say the message I'm gonna print is, today's date is now dot to string. I'm going to convert the date to string as well as I'm also going to print the machine name so that we know on which machine it is running. So for that, I'm going to use system.environment.machine name and log level as info. Let me add few more logs that would give us more information about the machine on which it is running. I can add system.environment and then you can put a dot and see all what information you can get about the environment on which it is running. Okay, you can print in that, is it a 64-bit operating system? Okay, now it's Boolean, so we're going to convert to string. Okay, and this is also info, and I'm going to print a message as well. Is it a 64-bit OS? And simply, give us space here okay and okay it's giving an error it says there is a call there's a bracket being expected why does it say so let's open and see okay system dot environment System.environment is 64 bit operating system dot two string error expected, which means somewhere we're missing out on something. Okay, so there needs to be a plus, a concatenation as well. Okay, and click on save. Now we're going to publish this. Now, while you are publishing, you need to make sure that to which particular folder you are publishing. Okay, and those particular folders should have certain rights, which we are going to see. 
So you can see as of now, I'm publishing in my modern folder. I can publish it to any folder. It's not a necessity that you have to publish it only to the modern folder. Okay, so I'm going to print the date. I'm going to process this particular, publish this particular process onto my orchestrator. Now let's go back to the orchestrator. Okay, let us open the orchestrator. Now, first prerequisite we have already achieved that we have created a background cross-platform automation project and we have published it to our orchestrator. Now, the second is that the robot unit should be available for the tenant. Now, if you want to run and actually see a robot running on a serverless machine, make sure that you're not on a community version because this particular function is only available for enterprise version. So you can go for a trial version to see how it works. You can see as of now, even I am operating it on a trial ver version. You can see it's written 46 days left for, for my trial because robot units are only available for enterprise version. Okay, so you need to make sure that you have an enterprise license. Now I'm going to create a process. So what I can do here that, okay, before creating a process, the other thing is that I have to enable unattended automation on an account. And for that, I need to make sure that I have a robot account. Now steps to create robot account is that you can go to the admin section. Okay, and you can come to accounts and group and click on robot account. And from here, you can create a robot account for yourself. So I'm going to name it unmole underscore robot account. Okay. And I can give it certain group membership rights. I'm going to give it administrator and automation user. And I'm going to create a robot account for myself. Once robot account is added, you can see it here. Now I'll go back to my orchestrator. Now, if you do not have a robot account created, what you can do is that you can go to manage access and you can enable unattended automation for that user. So suppose I do not have a robot account created, but I want this particular user to run my serverless, to run my process on a serverless machine. What I can do is I can go to manage access and then edit. Now the settings open up and I have to go to unattended setup optional and I have to allow unattended robot to run automation as this user, which means I have to enable unattended automation for this particular user. Okay. And that's it. The other thing what you can see is that it says for running service unattended automation, we recommend using a robot account instead. Okay. So it is recommended that you go with a robot account, but if you do not want to go with a robot account, you have to make sure that that user has unattended automation enabled. So one is this option and the other is creating robot account, which we already saw. Now, since you have robot account already created and you know that your process lies into the modern folder, you have to make sure that that robot account is tagged to this particular folder. Now, the other thing is that you're going to create a cloud robot serverless machine as well, which I'm going to name as Unmole serverless machine. Okay. And you can see the machine size is given that for small machine size, you need one robot unit per minute for standard you need two robot units per machine minute. This is why it is important that you have robot units available on your tenant. All you have to do is simply go and click on provision. Now, since you have the robot account and you have the machine, you have to make sure that these two are mapped to the modern folder because that is where your process is. For that, you have to go to folder settings, go to modern folder. Now, first, we are going to tag users. So I'm going to assign a counter group and I know the robot account that I created is by the name unmole underscore robot account. So I'm going to assign this particular user to the modern folder. I'm going to select a role, say automation user custom. And similarly, I'm also going to assign my serverless machine to this particular folder. Go to machine, click manage machine in folder and you can see this is the serverless machine and I'm going to update it. 
So these are the settings that you need to do. Now, if you go to your modern folder, we'll create a process because we've already published the package. So it's print the date. So here is our print the date. We're going to click on next, next. These are the additional settings. We need not to do anything here. It has already taken this cloud robot serverless. Okay, and we are going to keep it automatic. Now I can keep it small, standard, medium, large, depending on the machine size you want. I'm going to keep it automatic and create. And I'm going to close it as of now. Now if I run the same thing via my studio, simply if I go and click on run, we'll see what is the machine name and what is if it's a 64-bit OS or not. Now, if you open it, you can see this is my machine name and it's a 64-bit operating system. Now, I'm going to run the same thing on a serverless machine, which will not be my machine. Okay. So, what is our process name? It's print the date. Okay. And runtime type is cloud serverless. And I'm going to simply click on create. Okay. As of now, it isn't pending, but soon it would go into running state and we'll see what the output is. So let's click on refresh and wait for this particular process to start running. Soon it will go to running state from pending. So let's just wait for it to go. Okay, so you can see it is now into running state. So let's just refresh the logs to see what the output is. So it says is 64-bit OS true? You can see the machine name is 169. This is also a 64-bit OS and what is today's date, okay? And you can also see the time. It's 11, 17, 10, 38, 11 here on my machine. And over there, it's 5, 9, 14, which, is, which makes sure that, you know, it is running on a completely different machine. And you can also see the username. Okay, so this is the machine name slash host name. So that is also different, which proves it that it did not run on my machine. Rather, it ran on a serverless machine whose infrastructure we need not to care about. And another thing that I would want to highlight is that each job that you run on a serverless machine is limited to 15 minutes. So if there's any job that takes longer than 15 minutes, the job would be terminated. So you need to act accordingly optimize your automation project or you can split them into sub workflows that do not reach 15 plus minute time limit. Okay. So also when we were actually, you know, uh, creating a machine, uh, you could see the size as well. And while you're running, you can simply go and select the machine size that you want to. The only thing is that you should have that many robot units available for your tenant. Okay. Now, when you go with an enterprise license, say I'm running on a trial enterprise license. If you go to admin section, and if you go to this particular setting, if you go to edit license allocation, you can see I have 12,000 robot units available. Okay. You can see eight I have consumed by running these serverless automation. Similarly, you should have available robot units present here for you to run the automation on serverless machine. So that's it for this particular video. I hope you liked the video. Please give a thumbs up if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for upcoming interesting content like this. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.